those motherfuckers. Ah, look who's riding in it, a whole bunch of Mexicans. So if you haven't noticed already, I have my family here with me in California. I have my parents, my cousin, and my niece. They're out here living the California life more than I am. It's crazy. They've already explored the north, the northern side, and now they're in SoCal. Here with me. We're going to be on a lot of adventures. Right now we are in Old Town, San Diego. And then we got two more places to go. I've already been to the other places, but you know, gotta have the family come explore. Look at all this Mexican candy, y'all, in Old Town. Y'all want a little taste of Mexico's? It's a good spot to go to. I know I've been gone. I said I was gonna come back, and then I came briefly, and then I left. Listen, I don't know if YouTube's really my thing anymore. At this point. All these videos that I've been vlogging, it's more so for me. It's like a memory shoebox because I do have a tremendously bad memory. I really do have like short-term memory loss. It really does feel that way. I haven't gotten checked, but these videos are good for me because it reminds me of the things I've done. Like little pieces of my memories will always be on video. So more so for me guys but it's public so if y'all want to enjoy the journey with me y'all can go ahead and watch as y'all saw in the clips i was still in san diego at the time and uh i had my family around so here i am just hanging out and the one i'm about to speak to in the video is my cousin linda she has a doctorate in like psychology or some shit so i like having deep conversations with her just a little piece of our conversations while we're walking yeah i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing because that's disassociating myself right from the, the situation for the moment right oh that's that's what they call do we go is that what we call um sometimes people do sometimes people it's a personality sometimes people it's a coping skill yeah that one this one yeah right yeah but we're gonna go over there because they have a wait time Everything's all nice and dandy, going down Old Town. We got hungry. I apologize to my family because they arrived when it was 100 degrees. We're hot, my hair looks crazy, I look funky. Listen, we tired, we hot. We had to cool off a little bit at Cafe Coyote. <laughs> Uh, they, got the, they got the bar over there. We're going to sip on something today. Ooh, We're going to get a little tipsy today. We got a margarita flight. We're going to try these different flavors. My cousin thinks she's not going to get tipsy, but I'm going to get her tipsy today. My parents don't drink. She can't because she's driving. But me, child, I'm going to get fucked up. I'm my vacation too, shit. I've been in like house arrest pretty much. They had a little market off to the side, so as we were walking, we'll try to check it out for a little bit. Oh my god. Oh my god, really? Out of everything, but pa? I like paper. Green Bay? <laughs> Baby. No, I know. All this food. It's comfortable? <laughs> I like, I like green paper, but you know It's why? good for the beach? Yeah, but you know what the problem is? Uh. This, they have a... It's really nice, though. Oh, it's faded? I can buy it to yours. There's a lot over there. Look at by Jaden. Yeah, you can buy it. $26. Chris will kill me. Oh my god. Since we were there, we might as well hit the beach, right? You're in San Diego, California. Where else would you go? Who's the house? It's actually perfect weather to go in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. If I was a if I was a water person, I'd go in it. Look yeah. at my hair, man. Look at my hair, it's crazy, fine. Mine too. Look at shit. I should I, I don't have no more hair anyway. I should have wore a hat. I don't have no more hair anyway. <laughs> I don't care. Oh no. Oh. 
Damn. Yeah, give me the baby. Oh, nice. That was good. Oh shit. My my move, man. I might move. Cause he's going on the on the thing. How about me no? Oh my god. Let me see, Jazz. Let me see what you got. What you got fruit? <laughs> my mom's ready for the ocean, okay? She ready for the ocean. The thing I heard about these cottages is that um because I go online to uh -huh. do my research. They said don't even waste your money. <laughs> it's more about the location. It's just really nice. You see the good it's not really that glamorous. It's just a location. Yeah. It's on the pier, which is cute. It's a good experience to have. It's a lot of people. You gotta be careful with uh, the pier because it's literally unleveled. You can easily trip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just a George. Oh, shit. Home, just like that. <laughs> That's right. Now it feels good. Damn, that's a nice ass breeze over here. Huh? Oh my god, this is nice. Why were we over there? Oh, you did go surfing? Yeah. I uh, was the champion. Danny and his sister did not do so well. They kept working more than me. But you have to wipe out. Like, you know, that's part of the system. Yeah. But it's hard, girl. It looks hard. I mean, they look tired and shit. This side of the beach is uh, surf. only surfers allowed. Oh, really? The surfers are not allowed on the other side. That's why they're all over here. It's hard for me because I don't speak Spanish, so it's hard for me to explain. Obviously, me neither. <laughs> and they're my parents, so it makes it hard to... When you can't talk to your parents on a deeper level because of the language barrier, it kind of sucks. But I still have conversations with grandma. Yeah, but some things, sometimes they just say, oh, okay, okay, but they don't understand what the fuck you She understands stuff sometimes. Sometimes, some things. First of all, she'd be laughing. She goes, how are you and grandma like best friends, but you guys don't speak the same language? <laughs> I mean, because we're such good friends, we understand each other. Aw, you don't even gotta speak. And we, we got our own little language. You know, you know what I'm saying? So basically what we're talking about is, I don't speak Spanish, I'm Mexican. My three older sisters do. My younger sister does sometimes, right? Violet? Violet? Not really. Not really. I never heard. I don't know, but we don't speak it. I stopped speaking by choice. But, uh, yeah. I Can't understand about... more than I speak it. I understand it completely. Not completely. I can read it completely, too. I can. But it just makes it hard to communicate with my parents sometimes. I don't know if a lot of you guys have the same uh, experience or... And if you do, comment below. Let me know how you guys communicate with your parents or your siblings, however it is. But you know what I'm saying? I don't like sand on me. Like, you know... Oh. Listen. It's like, I don't, I don't have OCD, but it bothers me. <laughs> like, you know when uh, when I wash my hands, I gotta dry my hands completely, otherwise it'll bother me. So maybe that's OCD. The one I was speaking with there is my niece, Jasmine. I'm really not a beach person. I don't fuck with the ocean like that, so why not have a good conversation? Oh, damn, that's so close you can get. Oh, what happened? Lifeguard's telling my parents to go somewhere else? What happened? Oh, because it's too strong, right? Or what? What happened? Uh oh, something happened. The lifeguard sold them something. Again, you can't go wrong with some more food, right? That wraps up my San Diego trip. I was there from January to November in 2022. I was there for a long time. I didn't expect to be there for that long, but I was. And I, uh, that's when I injured myself and I was out for four months. I had a knee injury. So I went back home during that time. Y'all can go back a few videos and look at my journey there with my knee injury. But I am back in California. Los Angeles was my next assignment. So the next few videos, will be in LA. This is the time where I was going through a lot. So I kind of kept it low. That's why I haven't been filming any reaction videos. But I still filmed a couple clips here and there um, to vlog with. I didn't film as much as I would have liked. Just wasn't in the mood for it. But I did catch some things. But what I didn't catch was filming my home where I stayed at. I usually do. I show you guys the inside of the home, give you guys a little tour. But I do have a couple pictures. So this is what we got here. 
This is my room that I rented out, small but everything I needed. Now, if you guys haven't been in California, specifically LA, let me tell you about that traffic though. That traffic is terrible. First few weekends, I did not do anything. I stayed home because that traffic would put me in a bad fucking mood. California is overpopulated to begin with, but LA, even worse. LA is the new Hollywood, where all the creative, artistic, performance type of content comes from. So if you see in the movies, uh, the beautiful palm trees, the hills, you see all that stuff, right? But if you pay attention, they don't show you the ground, okay? It's dirty like a motherfucker. They litter all the time because of the homelessness. It's just so bad. Garbage everywhere you go dirty especially downtown you guys do not want to go to downtown la you'll see all these druggies literally shoot up everywhere ain't the spot to go go to the valley or some you know that's a nicer area that was actually my next assignment but we'll get there soon but let me tell you something that got me really happy i went to the liquor store look what i found i haven't drank 40 since i was in my 20s my choice of drink was the king cobra 40 ounce and in chicago i i can't find that bitch nowhere unless you go to the hood hood i don't know here in la where i was every liquor store had all the 40s i wanted okay this was nostalgic and so i had to grab one for my birthday and take a little picture you know what i'm saying well you guys i stayed in south central los angeles for six months I lived right there in the hood. The crimes there are pretty high. There's a lot of shit going on there. They even have documentaries about South Central. Mickey offers to take me for a tour of the most infamous track in LA. Where are we heading? Where are we, going? Well, we headed to Figueroa. It's referred to as the track, the blade. It's been around since the 60s. We're talking about 95 blocks. Wow. 95 blocks. How dangerous is it, do you think? It's extremely dangerous. Got the tricks you have to worry about. You have upsetting the pimp you have to worry about. Kidnappings, stabbing, shootings, plenty of them. All that's just true. I lived off of Figueroa and 99th Street. Okay, right there in the hood. Figueroa is the street where all the prostitutes are. And in that clip of the documentary, they showed a lot of white prostitutes. And I'm a little bit surprised by that because most of them were women of color. A couple white girls here and there, but not so much. But literally, that whole street of Figueroa nothing but prostitutes in every intersection not every light okay i'm talking about every little street intersection there was a prostitute there and you had your regular so you knew which area was there it's kind of like gangs they own their corner and if another bitch is there they have no problem screaming at them like that's my spot get the fuck out of my area bitch everybody knows my spot <laughs> okay you hear that shit these women were out there prostituting all day, all night, 24 seven, in the rain, in the cold, during the holidays, they even dressed up a little for the holidays, umbrellas out in the rain, everything. And I'm telling you, ass out, practically nothing on. Literally, like I would come home from work and they're fucking in the car. You know, there's a prostitute fucking a John in the car. They don't hide it, like these Johns, literally, you see these Johns literally come up, talking to them, picking them up. It happens in the daylight, in the night. You would think all of it's legal. There was another time I was walking in the street and one of the prostitutes get, gets shoved out of the car. And she's yelling, she's stumbling, putting her dress down. And then the guy sped off. And then she said, fuck you. Naturally, I would ask the woman if she was okay. But I had to remember where I was at. And if, the, if her pimp is around, I ain't gonna involve myself. So let, I just had to let it be walk on by as if nothing happened that that woman was stumbling all over so she was wasted or on something and you do see the pimps here and there like around them there was one time where i was walking gizmo and these two prostitutes like oh my god your dog is so cute i just smiled said thank you walked off because i ain't trying to have a pimp be pissed off at me and try to think that i'm trying to get one of their bitches okay because listen i ain't I ain't for me. I ain't no John and I ain't no pimp. As I walk a little further with my dog and I see a book bag just right there on the ground full of items and it looked like a like a care package that people would give out to the homeless. I'm not quite sure but for it to be just left there with all the items in there and it looked like she may have been a mother, a woman that owned it. Like, I'm not sure but it did look like she was scooped up 
quickly. I don't know if it was human trafficking purposes or whatever had you, but it did not look good. They out here. Got the helicopter cop up in the sky. You also hear the helicopters all night long just cruising around trying to see what's happening you'll see their little spotlights from up in the sky down to the ground they were out looking for shit and then you also hear the fireworks the simple fireworks you know obviously for those that don't know what that means whenever you hear the fireworks in the hood that means the drugs are ready drug dealers were calling out to the druggies like drugs are ready come out come get some It does not fail. Every weekend in the morning, typically every Sunday morning, I always heard these people yelling and screaming at each other. Yep, they were my alarm clock. Ain't no rooster waking me up. There was raids also that was going on while we're driving from point A to point B. But the street takeovers, if you guys are on TikTok, you see these street takeovers all the time in LA. Literally people out there stopping traffic at the intersection and just doing donuts, okay? These are all planned out, by the way. So you either gotta know the people that are in it to know what time and what spot to show up at, or you just coincidentally just show up and bam, shit's happening. And that's what happened to us. We were just driving on by and whoop, Right there, everyone stopped and shit started going. It, this shit literally lasts, I would say, three to five minutes, max. And then the cops come. Damn, that's scary as fuck. Hell yeah, I would not be standing right there, honestly. Damn. Oh, no, there's two of them going at the same time, the too. And the cops can't do anything because they're blocking everything, and there's only two cops. They need more cops. They're coming, more cops are coming. Damn, look, there's six of them. And they're all fucking running. They're running. They're running. They're running. They're running. They're running. Oh, shit. Oh, are we in the way? Yeah. Go. 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 Can we still get through? Oh, yeah. We're going to get through, girl. Damn. can't do nothing what are you gonna do there's too many of them so yeah it, it was an interesting experience and uh i wouldn't trade it for the world it was one of the best places i've ever lived at despite all the crimes that happened there as long as you mind your business you're good so that's it for the video today i hope you guys enjoyed it there's more videos to come just gotta edit them and put them all together and i hope you guys are ready to see more see y'all in the next video peace